Alright guys, um, I want to do a quick tutorial here, um, and it's going to be, uh, I haven't found really many good tutorials on this, so it's going to be on exporting from Blender to UDK, um, weapons specifically. I'm going to cover at least uh, the basics here of getting the model and all that uh, set up. So, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to cover the Blender stuff really, um, that's different tutorials, and other people do it way better than I do. So. Um, I'll let you figure that out, but essentially just some of the basics for Blender setup. Um, this is a model I downloaded from BlendSwap, um, and essentially um, all the texturing and all of that was done, but the armature wasn't done, uh, so I added an armature. Now, <clears throat> do you can do any Blender tutorial to find out how to do an armature, but for you to K, we need a few more uh, very specific things. Um, you notice here, let me, okay, um, you notice here if we go and check out our armature. Um, all of our bones, every single one of them is parented under a root bone that must be located at the exact center. Zero, zero, zero. And all the bones must be parented in some way underneath that bone. Uh, UDK requires it. Um, and we have our usual, you know, like you might expect for animating. Um, we have our grip, uh, trigger, chamber, that's for the, the Man, I should have had more lighting here, or maybe just change this to solid instead of textured. Well, that's strange. Learning all sorts of new things about Blender. As you can tell, I'm not exactly an expert on this. Alright, well anyway, um, after you have everything all set up with your regular bones, um, your chamber is right there, and then the shell is in there, and the shell pops out. Um, you're going to add a few more bones. Um, right now we just have the simple uh, simple little setup, um, but you'll need these for sockets in UDK for controlling uh, the gun and how it attaches to humans, because you'll need to attach the gun to a hand and uh, you'll have to add a muzzle flash in UDK. Um, so essentially the bones I have right now, um, let me just move this bone back there, uh, is armature B as in bone right hand and then I have um, I don't know if I'm going to be using this but uh, bone left hand and then um, bone muzzle flash so those are the bones I have um, another thing to check um, all of your bones in the armature if you want to export them have to have um, <clears throat> deform set uh, for some reason. I've tried it and it doesn't seem to work without deform. Now these bones right here, the muzzle flash right hand and left hand, uh, I've been told you all you need is like a custom shape or some sort of empty. Um, uh, the tutorials I've seen have been through for 3D, 3D Studio Max, but this works for me so I'm just going to go ahead and make them actual bones with uh, deform selected so that they will be exported and imported correctly. So um, if we take a look at the animation now see now it doesn't have the texture on it. Um, I created a very simple, very very simple and horrible animation. Um, 15 frames, just uh, yeah. What is with this? There we go. Um, as you can see, just the the gun trigger goes and then a shell pops out. So nothing fancy. But but it'll uh, it will help. Um, there we go. It'll help show how animations are imported. Uh, you do need the FBX um, export option um, that you can get. I believe it's in the default add-ons. Um, there is one change that I made, and I'll post a link to the change I made, and that that's one of the tutorials I used to get it set up for exporting. Um, there's I actually went in the source and edited, commented out uh, a line, but all right. So essentially, what I'm going to do is select my gun, right-click, hold it down, select my armature. I'm going to go to File, Export, FBX. We're going to scroll down and let's go just my UDK settings. I check selected objects. I keep the scale at 1. Um, and then my armature and mesh are the only thing I've selected. I do apply modifiers. Only deformed bones include, and obviously because um, I 
probably don't have to do the default take, but I just leave it that way. That's the settings. And one more thing I forgot to add. Um, you might, if your object is scaled way wrong, like it's so tiny or so massive, and you can't seem to get it to work no matter how much you change the scale options in like the, the export or seem to scale in here. because when you're in object mode, you have to hit control A and hit scale. You have to hit that before you, so that you apply the scale before you export it because then you'll have major issues. Maybe it's common knowledge to people that know Blender, but it wasn't common knowledge to me. It took me forever to figure out. So <clears throat> once you have all that set, you're just going to go and export it to an FBX file right there and I'm not going to do that because I already have it. So um, once that is done, we're going to go ahead and launch the UDK editor. All right, once the UDK editor opens, um, the content browser, open that up and select import, the very top option. Let's see if I can, doesn't really matter. Import, the very top option. And just go to your desktop and go to spaz12 modified, hit open, and um, make sure it says skeletal mesh. If it says static mesh, it usually means you didn't select everything. Um, and check use TOA's reference pose. Um, and uh, if you want, you can do import materials and textures, which we're going to do. And hit OK. And it's going to give you this incompatible FBX version. I haven't had any issues with it, but you can download for free the Autodesk FBX converter. Um, it's like uh, uh, 2013 or whatever it is. And run the file from Blender into that, and that will convert it to the correct version. And you should be all set to go. So um, we'll quickly let this import. And once that's done importing, you notice it imported all the the textures and everything, and then we can right click on the sculpt mesh, hit edit using anim set editor. Let's go ahead and move that way the F over there. And if you don't see anything and you have to scroll way in to see anything, it probably means your your uh, scale is way off on your model. So, but as you can see, looks great. And uh, let me be clear, this is a high poly model. I didn't you know remove the polys or anything. And it was also very well textured, so um, probably won't be using it for the game until we at least strip some things out, but looks beautiful. So let's go ahead and we can also, if we really want to, we can go ahead and do file import FPX animation. Oh, sorry. First we have to do new anim set. And just hit OK on that. Go to anim set and uncheck use anim rotation. I don't want to do that. Um, and then we'll go into file uh, import FBX animation. Choose your FBX file again. Hit OK for that message again. And then, hey, we have some keyframes. We can hit this. Boom. That doesn't look quite. Um, we might have wanted to do resample animations, but um, whatever. Nobody cares. So that's your animation. Yay, yippee, yay. Um, now we have to do a few tests to make sure the gun is the right size and just run over a few things. So what we're going to do is we're just going to close out of this and then we're going to go to all assets and then go to skeletal mesh and oh that's not it. Skeletal mesh. There we go. And I like to choose uh, for testing this iron guard and just edit using anim set editor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's your basic, basic guy. So, um, oh, you know what? One thing we forgot. Well, I forgot. I should say you guys really didn't, didn't mess up at all. Um, our Spaz 12. We need to set the nodes in it. So we're just gonna zoom in. Go to the node socket, or sorry, socket manager. Can we say nodes? Socket manager. We hit new socket. And we're going to choose our right hand, uh, bone right hand, hit OK. I'm just going to say um, weapon point. We're just going to go ahead and we'll just do that for now. Usually you add muzzle flash and all the other ones, um, but that's all we need. And then we're going to go all the way back over to this thing here. And we'll go ahead and hit socket manager again, then weapon point, 
go back to our content browser, make sure that's selected, which it is. And under preview skeletal mesh, we would go ahead and pop in our SPAS 12 modified behind the arrow. And then we're just going to go ahead and minimize and take a look. And as you can see, it looks fairly well. Um, it, however, is not even close to his hand. The trigger is way back there. So that's something we can definitely fix. Um, what we have to do is go back into the socket manager and go to the relative location. And let's just go ahead and set the level that to like 14 maybe. And then minimize. And then we zoom in and Man, get used to so many different ways of moving your view from Blender to UDK and whatever else you're in. Um, and that looks pretty good, doesn't it? it looks pretty amazing. Um, awesome. Or maybe I've done it before, you know. Um, so that's good, but if you take a look just a little bit up here, you'll notice that it's halfway in his arm, which probably isn't very comfortable. So we're going to have to go back into the socket manager. And we're gonna. This one is good. We're gonna change the roll. I'm gonna change it like maybe six percent. Can't remember for sure on this one. Maybe seven percent. Maybe eight percent. Okay, that's probably good right there. So that's an eight percent roll on the weapon, and that's all relative. So whenever it moves, that will also move. So let's go ahead and try that. What you want to do to try this out is go in the animations select human base mail and then what you can do is what I like to immediately try is this right here um, you want to make sure that it looks good when he's crouched um, as you can see it's a little bit off so what we can try and do is I'm going to move that down one along the Z axis back into our socket manager and I think uh, negative one I think is what I have to do. yeah negative one and that's back the triggers back oops oh you can just drag it man I learn everything new things every day but um anyway uh, that looks pretty close and as you can see that's the dual weapon point right there so that's where he automatically goes uh, that's where if you're dual weapons that's where another weapon would go right there and I think maybe that's where the secondary if you have a... no that doesn't make sense I'm rambling sorry um, so oh shoot uh, let's go ahead and and there we go I had a little meltdown there um, so as you can see it's pretty good and I'm happy enough with that for now and then we can go ahead and play the animation and it looks pretty well like he's actually running with so we'll turn off the socket manager there so we can see a few things and amazing and then you can go ahead and scroll through whatever animations you want just to make sure everything oh, that's a great one um, yeah you can make sure that everything looks looks good which it does. So that's the very, very basics of getting a blender weapon uh, into UDK.